Welcome to Math with Mr. Todd. I'm excited to bring you week two of graphing. Last week we worked on just reading graphs and understanding what the different types of graphs look like. And I want to take you on a quick memory jog before we get going. We studied three different graphs last week. We learned about bar graphs, line plots, and picture graphs. And then we learned about data collection through tally charts. And so I have some data up here behind me. And this was favorite apples. And I'll be really honest, um, I just kind of made up this data. Normally we would use a survey. We would go around and ask people, what's your favorite apple? And then you would put a tally based on how many people said that. So the four apples I chose were Honeycrisp, Granny Smith, Golden Delicious, and Red Delicious. And I have some tallies next to them. And so before we get going at making the graph, we want to interpret this data first to determine how many people liked each apple. So let's look at the first column, Honeycrisp. How many people liked Honeycrisp? Right, so if you said eight people liked Honeycrisp, you're exactly right. So I'm gonna put an eight up here so that we know. All right, let's look at the next one, Granny Smith. So remember, these tallies are groups of five. So this is five, 10, 11, 12. 12 people liked Granny Smith apples. Okay. Golden Delicious, not so popular. Not as popular as the other two. One, two, three, four people liked Granny Smith apples. And then last but, or not Granny Smith, Golden Delicious. And last but not least, Red Delicious had five, six people that liked Red Delicious. So we've now interpreted the data. We've determined that eight people like Honeycrisp, 12 people like Granny Smith, four people like Golden Delicious, and six people like Red Delicious. So what we have to do next is we're going to start making some graphs. So I want to remind you that a bar graph looks like this. It has numbers that go up the side, and then normally whatever the options in the survey are go across the bottom. So that's what I've made here. I have numbers going up the side, 0 to 20. And at the bottom, I have the four different apple choices, Honeycrisp, Granny Smith, Golden Delicious, and Red Delicious. So what we're going to do is we're going to add bars to this graph to make a bar graph to display this data. So if I'm going to look at Honeycrisp, I want a bar that goes all the way up to 8. And so I'm going to add this bar for Honeycrisp that goes all the way up to 8. Okay, so if you notice, the top of the bar lands right on the number 8, and that's showing that 8 people liked Honeycrisp. Here's the other thing with graphs. The color of the bar does not matter for a bar graph like this. Sometimes there might be more than one bar under each, um, uh, under each topic. So like for example, when you get up into like upper grades, fourth, fifth, middle school, you might have two bars under Honeycrisp and one might be blue and one might be green and the blue might be boys and the green might be the girls. But for us, we're just putting one bar, it lands right on the number eight. For Granny Smith, 12 people. That's a lot of people liked it. So I have a bar here that's going to go all the way up to the number 12. Okay, so if I go over, I see that it lands right at number 12 at on, the, um, on this side of the graph. For Golden Delicious, just four people liked it, not that many. So I have a little teeny bar that's going to go right above Golden Delicious. And the top of it is going to hit right at the four. Okay, and then finally, Red Delicious had six people that liked it. And so I have a bar that's going to go on Red Delicious, and it's going to hit right on six. Okay. So the good thing about a bar graph is we can look at it and right off see which one has the most. So when I look at this, obviously the blue bar is the tallest. And so I can just look right under the blue bar and it says Granny Smith. And I know that without even looking at the numbers that the majority of the people in this survey liked Granny Smith. I don't know how many it is unless I look at this 
row of number or this column of numbers on the um, side of the graph. But I just at first glance know that the majority of the people liked Granny Smith. I also can look at this and see that the apple that was the least popular was Golden Delicious because the bar is smaller than all the others. Like I said before, I don't know exactly how many people liked Golden Delicious unless I look at these numbers up the side, but just by quick glance, I can see that Golden Delicious is the least popular. So that's the good thing about a bar graph. I can just look at it and see. It makes it a lot easier than having to look at data like this. It puts it into a pictorial model using bars and numbers, and it's so much easier to interpret. Next, we're going to look at making a line plot. So here we go. All right, friends, let's make a line plot using the same data. So this is the same data that we made the bar graph with. Um, and so I want us to take a look at how this chart is going to look and how this graph is going to look different than the bar graph. So right off, I have a, an example up here. Remember, the line plot just has a straight line across the bottom and uses X's that go up, um, and each X represents one person. So right off, I have the, the line chart, or the line plot here, ready for us to add to. And right off, the biggest thing that I notice is there are no numbers. So a bar graph had numbers that went up the side. And so right off, when I look at this chart, I see no numbers at all. So I know that I'm going to put X's and that every X is going to represent one person. So let's go ahead and make this chart together. I have all the apples across the bottom. Honeycrisp, Granny Smith, Golden Delicious, and Red Delicious. And we're going to add X's on top of each apple to display how many people liked each apple. So... For Honeycrisp, how many X's am I going to add? Right, if you said I'm going to add eight X's, you're absolutely right. So I'm going to go ahead and add eight X's to my Honeycrisp um, column. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, this looks similar to a bar graph, right? Because the data is going up. But it's not quite a bar graph because there are no numbers on the side and these are X's and not a solid bar. All right, how many am I going to put above Granny Smith? Right, if you said I'm putting 12 X's, you're absolutely correct. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So the secret with the line plot also is I want to make sure that my X's are about the same size because if I made these X's smaller and they ended right here, the data would not be accurate on the um, on the graph. All right, let's look at the next one. Golden Delicious is going to get how many X's? Four. One, two, three, four. Four X's for Golden Delicious. And then finally, Red Delicious is getting how many? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. So, this is our line plot that displays this data that's above me on the tally chart. Um, it's not perfect, okay, because as you can see, like, this, these X's are a little bigger than these. I made a, a mistake, but that's okay. Um, because this is taller, it still accurately shows the data. In order to figure out how many people are in each column for this graph, we can't look up the side because there's no numbers. We have to count the number of X's. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Honeycrisp, good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Granny Smith, correct. One, two, three, four. Golden Delicious. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Red Delicious. So this is a line plot. We have one more graph to make together, and that's a pictograph. All right, everyone, let's make our final graph for this week. Um, we are going to make a pictograph. And a picture graph is way different than any of the other graphs we've done so far. 
First off, there's no numbers again on this other than the number two right here that's telling me that every apple is gonna represent two people. There's no numbers going up the sides. Um, and so this time, instead of using X's, instead of using bars, we're using pictures to display the data. So here's an example of a pictograph. A pictograph always has a key. So in this case, every apple is gonna represent two people. So that means when I go to put up Honeycrisp, I'm not going to put up eight apples. I'm only going to put up enough for each apple to represent two people. So that means as I'm putting up apples, I'm going to be counting by twos until I get to the number eight. So count by twos with me. Ready? Two. Four. Six and eight. So two, four, six, eight. Only four apples are on the pictograph to show that. I can't have eight because if I had eight, that would be showing 16 people voted apples and only eight people voted apples. So remember, if the key says one apple equals two people, then you have to count by twos. All right, let's do Granny Smith. So for Granny Smith, we're going to still count by twos, ready? Until we get this time to the number 12. Okay, count with me. Oh, two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. So I had 12 weird striped apples because my printer was not behaving today. I have um, six strange striped apples displayed on this graph because each of those apples represent two. So two, four, six, eight, 10, and 12. Notice that if I would have only had eight, it would have been the same amount as the um, honey crisp. All right, let's do golden delicious together. All right, counting by twos until we get to four. Ready? Two, four. Only two apples are going on this pictograph because when I'm counting by twos, I'm counting two, four, and that's only two pictures. The last one we had was red delicious, and we're going to count by twos until we get to six. Count with me. Two, four, and six. So by looking at this graph, I can tell right off that, again, Granny Smith is the one that has the most, and that Golden Delicious is the one that has the least. But just like the line plot, in order to find out how many people liked each one, I have to um, count by twos and count each of the apples. All right, I'm gonna, um, we're going to interpret this data um, together, and then I'm going to let you go off and do your own stuff on Google Classroom. Okay, friends, one thing that you might be asked when you're interpreting data on a graph, oh, I have all three of our graphs up that we just made together. And one thing that you might be asked is, how many total people were surveyed in this survey? And so we can do that in multiple different ways. First off, we could just look at this tally chart and add, 8 plus 12 plus 4 plus 6. But we can also look at a chart like this and just count all the x's. So let's count together. Let's look at the line plot and count together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, so I'm not even going to start the video over. I got distracted and miscounted. So, and that's okay. We can start over. Okay, let's start over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So, I know when I look at this that there are 30 people that have been surveyed in this um, survey of apples. Let's figure out how we could use the um, pictograph to do it. 
same thing. We can count by twos for all those apples. So let's do it together. Are you ready? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Great. And then we can do the addition by doing 12 plus 8. 8 plus 2 is 10. Carry a new 10 to make that 20. Then I can do 20 plus 4, which equals 24. And then 24 plus 6, which equals 30. So you can use your graphs to determine how many people were surveyed, or you can use basic addition, whatever you prefer. But I have really enjoyed making graphs with you, and I'm really enjoying I'm going to enjoy looking at you making graphs on Google Classroom this week. They're going to look a little bit different than this because you're going to be using the computer and you're going to be dragging and dropping pictures instead of taping and you're going to be dragging X's instead of drawing them. Um, but you should get some good practice this week with making graphs. Um, the data you're going to use is real data. I sent out a survey last week about your favorite foods, your favorite summer activity, and your favorite subject in school. And you're going to make graphs using real data from our classroom. So the data will be on one slide, and then the next slide will be the graph for you to work on. You guys are doing an amazing job on, on, on all the online platforms. Keep up the great work, and I'm looking forward to seeing all the amazing things you're going to do on Google Classroom this week.